Today, I'm sharing 20, yes, 20 useful digital marketing tools to help you grow your business. We're gonna move through these quickly so that you can determine which tools might be great for your own workflow and business, but these are my favorites. I'm Phil Palin, a brand strategist. Welcome to my channel, where I promise practical advice to build your brand. Let's jump right into it, starting with the first tool. Let's start in Google Mail. This is obviously a popular tool for managing emails, and I'm sure it's one that you might use or one you've considered using. We're not gonna stop there, though. I'm not just gonna show you Google Mail. That's kind of boring. What I am gonna show you is an important plugin that I use to manage my inbox flow of emails. I get a lot of emails on a daily basis, sometimes more than a hundred. And the only way that I can prevent myself from caving into distraction every time, you know, right? A notification, ooh, new email. A lot of times it's not important. What I do is I use a tool, a platform, or a plugin called Inbox Pause. You see this bright yellow bar up here? This essentially pauses the flow of emails into my inbox. So what actually happens is as soon as I click this play button, again, it's an overlay or a plugin. So you see this little button over here on the uh, left-hand side below the compose button. When I have this turned on, it means that no new emails come into my inbox. Instead, they come into a folder that's hidden down here called inbox pause and it assigns a folder based on the date. And this is all of the emails that I've yet to go through. But the beauty of it is, is I can literally click unpause and boom, it will let all of those like floodgates into my inbox. I can go ahead, click pause again, and now I can just sit and sort and go through the emails that have just appeared. I find that inbox pause makes me more efficient. It helps me be you know be less distracted by a single notification on an email that probably doesn't matter. And so that's my first app recommendation. Next up, we're hopping over to Asana, which is the platform that I use as my project management software. Okay, and there's lots of options out there. There's Trello, there's Notion. I don't use any of those. I use Asana. So everything I'm working on gets dumped into here by category. So we actually sort out teams, our um, essentially where the client and then the, the projects specific to that client are. You can see down here, there's lots of projects and stuff in here. It's kind of crazy, but I just love the way Asana works. In fact, here's the task I'm working on right now. So you can see my inspiration from this, uh, or I should say for this video is from this creator that I thought was awesome. And I wanna show you one more thing. This will actually be platform three which is Ever Hour. Notice this little overlay, you know, I love plugins by now. This little overlay that shows me actually timing myself. So I'll click stop there. I'm timing myself while I work on this video. So far I've spent 55 minutes today and an hour and a half total. I can actually, with the help of Ever Hour, um, use this plugin to not only make use of Asana as a way to manage my tasks, but also time track my time on the platform. Now for my own project, doesn't matter quite as much, although I like to track how long it takes me to do things. That way I can tell you how long it takes me to do a YouTube video and I can plan my time accordingly. For clients, this is hugely important in a creative business, very important because all of my contractors get paid hourly or by the time that they work. And this means that I don't have to fuss at the end of the month, go through pay sheets, etc. It's all done automatically in terms of tracking it. That's called Ever Hour. In my case, I use it with Asana, but it does work with other apps. Definitely check it out. Next on my list of apps that I depend on in my business is Slack. Now I like to differentiate how we use Asana and Slack differently. Asana is used to manage projects and assign tasks. Slack is really where we go to talk about it. If we wanna have a conversation or we wanna discuss something or we wanna keep in touch with clients, we have dedicated client channels with all of our active clients and that prevents email. Uh, influx and back and forth. And then of course, internally, we have lot, I obviously I own the business, so I've got a lot of channels here, but we have unique channels for each dedicated deliverable, I'd say as part of a client project. And that way we can keep the right people in the channel and the right conversations organized by thread. Little trick, this is uh, kind of cool. Maybe you don't know this when you're using Slack, but when you go to send a message, you can send it live or if you're working with different time zones 
or you want to be organized and get ahead tomorrow, you can actually schedule your messages in Slack, which I'm a big fan of. Next up is Adobe Express. Now I talk a lot about Adobe Express on my YouTube channel because they are often a sponsored content partner of mine. I'm a proud Adobe Express ambassador, but this video is not sponsored. I should have said that at the top. None of these apps or tools or software are sponsoring this video. These are, in fact, apps that I use and love and depend on in my business. The reason I love Adobe Express for my standout content creation is ease of use, quality of templates, Adobe level design, right? Adobe is the name in the design world. And certainly um, this platform brings a lot of the best features, quick actions and, and you know, things that you need to do quickly. Um, they bring it to this platform. I love that now you can actually create a QR code. That's really cool. Um, social media content. I mean, this is my go-to. I love it. Next is answer the public for content ideas. Let's start with a keyword that might be related to what you do or whatever your brand is. I'm going to type personal branding. That is my thing. We give it here a second to load. And essentially what this tool is going to do, answer the public is going to visualize what people might be typing into uh, Google search. So, and not, not my, I mean, it is, this is what people are typing into Google. So it should give you some idea of where is a good starting point for creating content that people need, right? There's phrasing here. Uh, is personal branding overrated? I love that one. There's all kinds of ideas. There's things here I would have never thought of. You can even organize it by alphabeticals. I just, there's so, so much goodness in here from this free website. There are limited number of searches. So I would say use that one search wisely. Talking about social media apps, this is a free one, a free website that I use often. It's called Social Blade, and this is an awesome uh, again, free platform for tracking analytics across popular social media platforms. So I'll go ahead and enter my YouTube channel. Okay, there you go. You see it here. You can see subscribers. You can see daily growth. Really helpful. You can do exactly the same thing for Instagram. Let's go ahead and select Instagram and I'll type my username. I'm showing you my accounts, but I could also track other people's accounts here just as easy. Um, just as easy. So you can look at your competitors, like brands, brand heroes. You can see all of the data here. It's called Social Blade. It's free. All you have to do is create an account. Once you create an account and you log in, you'll have access to this info. This next tool is paid. It is for social media. It is called Flick, and it is the leader in choosing hashtags for your Instagram posts. So you would start here on search. You would start with a hashtag. Let's say hashtag personal branding. I'm using that example, and it's going to group suggested hashtags for me that I can consider using on Instagram. You can use up to 30 under low competition, which means high chance of ranking on these. That means when people search the hashtag or look it up, they'll see your post up at the top medium competition. So that's right in the middle and then high competition. These are often in the millions of total number of posts under that hashtag. Anyways, it's good to mix. If you have, you know, if you use, let's say 10, 15, up to 30 hashtags, you have a mix of all three groups. I like that it color codes them and I like that it keeps track. So I can go ahead and select a handful of these. I'm not really keeping track of how many, but look down here, it'll tell me how many I've selected. I can save to collection, reuse them, copy to clipboard, also audit selection. This is a really cool feature. It'll tell you if it's very small or very large, and it's having a look at your account and making those suggestions. It also tracks your performance, so you can look at analytics. I'll go ahead and select this. Um, you can look at analytics, follower change, etc. all kinds of useful info here for your Instagram account. I haven't been that active on Instagram, so my stats aren't that impressive, but that's okay. I also finally love that it tells you which hashtags you ranked on, and chances are if you rank on hashtags, you should probably use them again. The next one is really straightforward. That is the fact that I use Google Calendar. I will highlight a few of the Google apps in this video because I use a lot of them. Calendar, I mean, come on, most people use this. I really love Google Calendar versus Apple calendar or any of the other options. It's simple. It's straightforward. I like it. I like that I can color code um, things based on, um, you know, 
professional. So for example, anything related to business or branding is dark green, anything personal, uh, workouts and stuff is shown lighter color. I just like that I can quickly differentiate this. I use all day events to uh, sort out my travel schedule, flights, etc. So I love Google Calendar. I know it's straightforward and it's simple, but it works really well for me. I also love the integration. You know, I love integrations. I love the integration with um, Google Calendar for Zoom. So let's say I wanna go ahead and add an event, make sure you have the Zoom uh, plugin to, it's like an overlay that it provides uh, on Google Calendar to quickly make an event a Zoom meeting. That'll automatically add, I am not logged in, I would need to be logged in, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, but you can quickly make a Google Calendar event have a zoom link click fresh or click update rather and uh that other person if anyone's attending it will also get that invite we are halfway number 10 but it's not squarespace which you see on the screen in fact that's number 11 number 10 is this nifty little overlay which is a chrome extension and an amazing website called lastpass this is a dedicated password tool okay you see i click that little uh overlay there and you can see here uh lastpass integrates with google chrome seamlessly and allows you to store all of your passwords in a safe place you should not use the same password for more than one website and i love that lastpass has the feature to actually create a unique password for you the beauty of using lastpass which is minimal it's not free i think they do have a free plan but it's almost nothing, highly recommend. Um, LastPass will create a unique password for you that you do not need to remember because you can use this as an app on your phone or as a, a, an extension in your browser to automatically remember your logins. So I actually don't know any of my passwords for any of my main websites, Apple, Netflix, etc. Okay, I know Netflix, but Squarespace, for example, I don't even know my Squarespace password. It is unique, it is encrypted. That way, if there's ever a data breach and I have the same password for everything, then it doesn't get leaked and I don't, you know, totally mess up and lose any of my accounts. LastPass is the answer, I swear by it. Now we can log into Squarespace. So I'll go ahead using LastPass with my login, jump into Squarespace and show you my very favorite website tool. In fact, I'll bring up my own website here. I've got a lot of client websites uh, that load for me here. I'm in and out of all of these most of the day, but I love Squarespace. I think this is the most amazing tool to create a website, particularly for people who are experienced with the platform and learn the ins and outs, learn the opportunities for customizing it. Uh, more so than it is for someone to make their own website that's never made a website before. That's how they market it. I think they market it wrong, if you want my total honesty. Uh, Squarespace is really best for someone who really knows, understands the platform and, and can make a beautiful website that doesn't look like a template. So I'm a huge, huge fan of this. I use a lot of code on my website, which again, you need to kind of no CSS, you need to know the platform to be able to pull that off under design. You go here under custom CSS. This has hundreds of lines of code that I use on my website. And I just love this platform. It's so easy. It's so intuitive to use. If you have not tried it, you should. I've created lots of content about Squarespace on my YouTube channel, and I will link to it along with all the other apps in the description below. Now on the topic of websites, Squarespace is great because it will automatically compress any image file file that you upload. However, I think it's always safe to do this yourself. And my favorite free tool for that is called compressor.io. It looks like this. It does have some ads, but it's a free tool, so they can advertise to me. I don't mind. What you would do is you would go ahead and select any image that you plan on uploading to your website. Chances are you can compress that image a little more, which means it's going to load a little bit faster. Here's an example. I just pulled a JPEG that I had in my downloads folder. Before it was 59 KB, now it's 26 KB. Save 56%. This tool impresses me. I can't even believe it's free. It's amazing. All you literally have to do is drop the file here of anything that you're gonna upload to the web. This, this will absolutely make your website load faster. If load time is an issue for you, Typically, the easiest culprit is image size. Compress those images, 
replace them with the compressed images. You've got multiple settings here, lossy, lossless, or custom. I think lossy is gonna work for most of you. Also for email marketing, email blasts, the smaller an image, the, the better your deliverability is going to be. Use compressor.io, it is my favorite tool. Let's move from talking about websites to talking about email marketing. My preferred tool for email marketing is ConvertKit. You will see here, and thanks to YouTube, I get a decent number of daily subscribers to my list. I think I have, yep, almost 27,000 subscribers at the time of recording this video, and I get around, let's see, anywhere from 35 on the low end to 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70 subscribers, which is pretty awesome daily. And ConvertKit is where I manage all of this. This is where I keep track of everyone. I have all of my automations loaded in there. Sequences, they're called actually, uh, eBooks, this one, 100 Evergreen Content Ideas, has sent to over 20,000 people, which is pretty awesome. Uh, ConvertKit is the tool I use to manage my email marketing, and I absolutely love it. It's kind of boring, so I'm going to move fast. Zapier is the tool that I typically use. I use a few others, but this is the one that I typically use to connect two apps that don't work together. So in this case, Squarespace, which hosts my website and ConvertKit, which hosts my email marketing platform, those don't connect in a natural way. So I use Zapier to send information from Squarespace to ConvertKit. So in this case, you'll see here all of the instances on my website where someone will enter a form or enter their information and it moves info from Squarespace to ConvertKit. This is the tool that connects thousands of apps to that might not go together naturally, but using Zapier, this is the tool that you can connect them. This next one is not browser-based, but I feel like it's one that I should mention because I do get compliments on my keynote presentations, specifically the design of them. And for those keynotes that you'll see, sometimes I do them in a YouTube video, but more often I do them on stage. Um, I use Keynote for these. I absolutely love Keynote by Apple. Uh, I'm able to use one simple transition tool. This is my trick, listen up. Uh, it's called Magic Move. It's when there's one element uh, between two slides, when it's exactly the same element, Apple will move them from slide to slide, which is really cool. You'll see here, this is a sample presentation. As I keep clicking, notice it increases, decreases in size. This isn't fancy animation. This is simply using a little trick called Magic Move. Let me exit out of that and actually show it to you. So you would go ahead and select a slide, go to Animate, and see, I've got it selected here as the option. The transition is called Magic Move. This is like hidden in Keynote, and I swear, I swear by this tool. Uh, Magic Move moves elements, see, uh, between slides, and it's awesome. Now, let's talk about Google Docs. I absolutely love Google Docs. What you're looking at right now is my Google Docs template for this very video. So I've designed, just using a simple table and some color, I've designed what I use as a script template. So here, my intro, and then in this case, I'm doing screen records. So those are each individual uh, video files that I label here for my editor in a certain color so we can see them. I do my YouTube description down here, my wrap in the video, and this makes it really easy for me to organize. I love that in Google Docs, you can actually, it's a really long, it's all my YouTube scripts. I love that you can actually add a header. So this is a branded header for me. You would just double click on that header area in my case, and then maybe in your case, you can add an image that you could design in Adobe Express or somewhere like that. And I just love it because it uh, looks, I think it looks pretty cool given that it is a Google Doc. When I want to create a simpler slideshow or one that's browser-based so it ends up being easier to share or collaborate on, I do not use Keynote for that. I use Google Slides. Now we begin some Google apps that I use and I'll go through how I use them quickly. Google Slides is awesome, a little more minimalist in its uh, presentation styles, but you'll see here I use uh, some simple design tactics. So I'll duplicate slides and then change one element on them. That's very common. You see I'm doing that here. Um, again, not the fancy transitions I just showed you in Keynote, but 
uh, Google Slides is so much easier to share, collaborate, track revisions. Um, these become really useful for certain projects, and this is an example of how I use this one. Google Slides. Okay, we have to talk about Google Sheets, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry that the screen is blurred. This actually is confidential information. This is where I track all the financials in my business by month, by category. So we look at things like every day, you know, even down to the client, how much they pay per month, broken down by different services. So clients that are on retainer, clients that are paying for a brand audit, in-group coaching, course sales, etc. Again, the screen is blurred because I can't show this to you. I can't have this information out floating in the public, but this is how we track it. Google Sheets allows us to be collaborative on this. I find that it is awesome uh, and works just the same way you might use Excel, but it's browser-based, which means it's much better for collaboration. Okay, two more. One I've talked about in my best performing YouTube video of all time, which is three free apps for content creation. Maybe you've seen it. I'll link to it on the screen. That is Dropmark. This is where I store all of my crazy ideas, clippings, things that I see online. Again, it has a Chrome extension, so you can quickly grab photos, videos, even websites embedded. I love this. If I click on websites, I can literally just add websites into here and actually interact with them live. So I love this splash page by my friend Jordan. I can actually interact with it live right from the app itself. It's called Dropmark. Highly recommend it. We've made it to the final app, the final website, the final digital marketing tool that I recommend for you. This one is more administrative. It relates to juggling conference calls and such when you have multiple time zones. I have not found an easier way to convert time zones. No easier way than World Time Buddy, which is a free tool, browser-based, where you can literally just type in three different places uh, just by city. It'll show you the time, but it will also show you this amazing overlapping calendar scheduler clock type thing. So you can actually see when might be a good time to schedule a call so that it works for everyone in different time zones. I use this all the time with travel and with clients abroad. I also like this little feature, the color coding shows when it's nighttime for them, when it might not be a good idea for a call. This yellow is generally the range that you want a conference call. Wow, 20 digital marketing tools that I love and use. Hopefully there are a few in there that pique your interest. Let me know which ones you're excited to try. And if you've got any other lingering questions, comment below. Let's keep the conversation going on down there. I'll respond to those personally. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. That helps other people discover these videos, which we work hard to create for you. And subscribe for more of my videos on branding, positioning, building, and promoting your brand. Next, I'm sharing a few videos that I think you'll be interested in. I'm Phil Palin. Thanks for watching and those videos are coming up next. Thank you.